Hi, welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around, I'm going deeply into 1940s and 1950s popular culture. Hollywood films, to be more precise, and a particular kind of Hollywood film that they don't make anymore. Some people could call it Orientalism, some people call it Arabian Nights Fantasies, some people call it Adventure Fantasies. Whatever you call it, it was a very popular genre. It started in the silent film era. The Germans did a whole bunch of these Oriental fantasy movies. The English did, including... Chu Chin Chow and Thief of Baghdad, the 1940 version, which has an incredibly interesting and deep history. And there are other ones too. There were things like Kismet, a musical based on a 1935 movie starring Ronald Coleman and Marlena Dietrich. And this version is the version with Howard Keel and um, Anne Blythe and the wonderful Dolores Gray playing Laloum, the Wazir's wife, who steals the whole movie. Fantastic film, Kismet, love it. There were things like Baghdad with Maureen O'Hara playing a Bedouin princess, even though she was a red-headed Irish woman. Uh, this one's also got Vincent Price in it, which is always a bonus as well. So there are a whole bunch of these, but there's not a lot of love given to them in the modern film appreciation community. That may change now because imprint have just been a bit bold. And brought out Tales of Adventure Collection number one. I hope there are more of these. I hope they may do different genres in them. But this one with five movies is in my sweet spot as a movie buff. Because I love these movies. I'm very aware of the cultural appropriation. And I know they're based on tales published by Richard Francis Burton. An English explorer who went to the East and pinched their stories and monetized them. And then had the unfortunate problem of having a wife who, when he died, got rid of all of the saucy stories he told. These five movies are fantastic for a number of reasons. First off, a lot of them have never been on disc in Australia. One of them has never been on disc anywhere. Secondly, they put together a really great package where the more important of the movies have commentary tracks and have explanatory tracks and have a whole bunch of extras on them, and the other ones are just left being wonderful. I've seen four of these five movies, and I like them a lot. The movies are, and you can see it on the cover there, Arabian Nights from 1942, The Desert Hawk from 1950, Zarak from 1956, A Thousand and One Nights from 1945, and Omar Khayyam from 1957. Great box. I love these chunky box sets. And for me, this may well be one of my favourite imprint releases, which is a big thing given that they're now on to 217 to 220 releases but i like these a lot because of that fondness i have for this kind of a movie and the one i watched today is a 1942 one which for me has a, a whole bunch of virtues arabian nights with john hall maria montez sabu and a supporting cast that is quite impressive as well beautifully shot this is the first movie universal did in the three strip technicolor process where they had three different color strips blended them together and made the movies and it has a beautifully saturated color palette two half brothers battle each other for the power of the throne and the love of a sensual gorgeous dancing girl Scheherazade played by Maria Montez beautifully looking film uh, they really went to town the production design in this is fantastic the costumes and sets and the matte paintings are impressive don't always look really great in Blu-ray because the special effects technology at the time was quite limited. But I love this movie, having watched it. Even though the two leads, even though the two leads, John Hall and Maria Montez, were good at a certain type of movie, but were never fantastic in cinema. Sabu, on the other hand, steals the show. And the weird thing is that the secondary characters are great. They've got Billy Gilbert playing the guy who leads the troupe of performers, into which the prince. Arun Al Rashid, played by John Hall, falls when he is almost killed by his half brother, who's played by Leif Erikson, who later turned up in the High Chaparral, amongst other things. But the supporting cast of players in the cast of entertainers is pretty impressive too. There's Sinbad, who's retired from being a sailor and is trying to tell people the stories of all of his adventures, but nobody wants to listen to him. He's played by Shemp Howard. Yes, the Shemp Howard from the Three Stooges, playing Sinbad the Sailor. Kind of impressive, not exactly the same as Sinbad played by John Philip Law, 
but he gets some fun there. And then they also have Aladdin played by an actor called John Quaylen, who later turned up in supporting roles in John Ford Westerns. And he is looking for the lamp that makes the genie appear because he's lost it and every lamp he passes he has to touch. So there are these light, fun things in this. Doesn't have many supernatural elements, but it's got some uh, beautiful locations in Kanab, Utah. It's got fantastically sumptuous designs. It's got beautiful women in diaphanous costumes. A lot of fun, this one, and very much of its time, but still entertaining as hell. Then we get the one I haven't seen from 1950. Then we get the one from 1950 that I haven't seen yet, but I'm looking forward to. The Desert Hawk. Now, it stars Yvonne DiCarlo as Princess Scheherazade. Richard Green as the Desert Hawk. Richard Green from The Avengers of Robin Hood on TV back in the day. Jackie Gleason playing Aladdin. The big bad Prince Murad is played by George McCready. Fantastic character actor who was really great at playing villains. And another Three Stooges turns up as Sinbad. This time it's Joe Besser. He became one of the Three Stooges late in their career where Larry and Mo. Uh, needed a third party and and Chip and Curly had died. So you've got two of these Arabian Nights movies with three Stooges in them. Now, one of the supporting players, and this is kind of interesting, Rock Hudson turns up in a supporting role before he became a star. When a freedom fighter known as the Desert Hawk tricks the Caliph's daughter into marriage, the evil Prince Murad plots to have the princess killed and her husband framed for her murder. So basically it's a film noir done as an Arabian Nights story. Uh, this one's got a few extras on it. I'll read you the extras off Arabian Nights first. The Arabian Nights extras. Actually, I'll show them to you and you freeze frame them. Ton of good extras there. And in this one, you got a high definition presentation from a 2K scan. Audio commentary by a film historian's Fee Sutton and Mark Jordan Leggan from 2023. Audio commentary by also Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons. Man in the Shadows, is Jeff Chandler at Universal. I don't know that Jeff Chandler's in this movie. He doesn't appear on the IMDb. But they've got a documentary about Jeff Chandler in this one. I'm going to watch that because I'm a big fan of Jeff Chandler's work. So The Desert Hawk is the one I'm going to watch next because I haven't seen it. Now, the, there are two movies on one disc here. You've got A Thousand and One Nights and you've got Zarak. Now, you've got a reversible cover depending on which movie you want to have in it. But I've got the cover for A Thousand and One Nights on this one. Because it's a movie I really like. It's a comedy with Cornell Wilde, um, Adele Jurgens, Evelyn Keys, Phil Silvers. It is hilarious. In fact, I like this one so much. I actually have the day bill for it. The original 1950s day bill poster. The Australian one for this particular movie. But A Thousand and One Nights is great. Cordell Wilde plays Aladdin, who is a singer. Uh, his voice is dubbed because Cordell Wilde was never a singer. I'll read you the blurb. Nothing goes right for Aladdin when it attempts to win the heart of Princess Amina, played by Adele Jurgens, until he discovers a magical lab that houses the genie. She in turn falls for her new master and successfully thwarts his would-be royal romance. Now, this is a lot of fun because the genie his name is Babs, is played by Evelyn Keys, who is beautiful in this. She is just a lot of fun. His psychic Abdullah is played by Phil Silvers. And Abdullah is, as he says, a man born 1,200 years too early. Because what Abdullah is, is a 1940s hepcat. In an Arabian Nights movie, he's wearing glasses. He talks in jive talk from the 1940s. Uh, he shows us the word groovy well predates the 1960s and he is a walking anachronism in this film and is a lot of fun in it and in fact there's even a little nod to Frank Sinatra at the end of the movie which I love the production design of this is pretty good like a lot of the other films the Arabian Nights in particular and the Desert Hawk this one's in 1.33 to 1 Academy ratio because widescreen movies weren't made in 1945 and it's a lot of fun to watch. I, I really enjoy this every time I watch it. I love A Thousand One Nights. Then you've got Zarak, which is interesting. It's kind of set a little further east than most of these movies, kind of in that, the area of Afghanistan, roughly. This one has Victor Mature, Michael Wilding, and Anita Ekberg. Blurb says Zarak Khan, 
banished from his village after it revealed that he is in love with his father's youngest wife, Salma, played by Anita Ekberg. He becomes the ruthless leader of an outlaw band in the Indian-Afghanistan border. This is weird because this is a stepmother story, which is still a genre that's quite popular in certain parts of the internet. But Zarek was actually made in England because it's directed by Terence Young, who also directed James Bond films a little later on. Yeah, it's going to be interesting watching that one because I saw it a long time ago, but I don't remember too much about it apart from Victor Mature and a Turban. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll show you the cover for that because it's in here and I want to get the disc out very carefully. There's the cover we've got for Zarek with um, Anita Ekber very prominently in that particular cover. But again, this is not one to take too seriously. In fact, none of these are, are dead serious movies at all. But A Thousand One Nights is my favourite from the disc and maybe my favourite in the whole box set. And that then brings me to the last one again, Cornell Wilde. In The Life, Loves and Adventures of Omar Khayyam. Not too many Hollywood films are made about a Persian poet. But I'll read the blurb again because uh, Imprint seems to be very good at doing this. In the 11th century Persian city of Nishapur, the poet, astronomer, soldier and military strategist Omar Khayyam woos Ashar's bride and foils a plot of assassins. Which is pretty much all you need to know about that one. This one's widescreen, beautiful technicolor, lovely production design as well. And the cast is pretty good. I like the cast in this one as well. This is way at the end of the cycle of these Orientalist adventures because it's from 1957. Corner Wilds in there, Michael Rennie, Deborah Paget as a beautiful princess. Deborah Paget's wonderful. John Derrick as a young prince. Raymond Massey as a Shah, so you've got a Canadian in there as well. Yima Sumac turns up as Karina, a uh, handmaiden. Sebastian Cabot turns up in that one. Perry Lopez, who you might remember, played the friend of Jake Gitt is a police detective in Chinatown and in The Two Jakes. Morris and Criminabium Sophia and Edward Platt, the chief from Get Smart, turns up again as an, a kind of supporting play but doing a very good job of it. Uh, directed by William Deatley, but I would like this one. I, I haven't seen it for a long time, but I remember liking it and they're quoting all the poems of Omar Khayyam at various times. It's the most romantic of these movies because of that poetry and the fact that the swashbuckling hero is also a scholar and a polymath. So that makes it a lot more interesting than it would be otherwise. This one's got an audio commentary by a film historian Philippa Berry from 2023. And film historian Sheldon Hall on Omar Khayyam. So you get extras in here. You get a bit of context happening. Arabian Nights has a nice commentary about the whole genre by Kim Newman. And I did a whole bunch of notes when I was watching it. Then I watched the Kim Newman commentary. And Kim Newman had said pretty much everything that I was going to say about Arabian Nights movies. So, thanks, Kim. Just to put it all together again, this box set is... This box set's a dream come true for me. It really is something special and something that I like and something that I will treasure. It's the kind of movies that I watched when I was younger and I still like. I'm very aware of that cultural appropriation thing, so I don't, can't emphasize that too much. It's good to have copies of these movies that aren't just something off the internet that was ripped from a VHS tape from 30 years ago. And it works for me. It really is a lot of fun to revisit these movies. Uh, enjoy them because all of them are entertaining. I'm not sure about the Desert Hawk yet because it sounds a little like the Desert Song rejigged, but the cast in there may carry me through on it. But the rest of them I like a lot, and particularly A Thousand and One Nights, which has a tongue-in-cheek sensibility, has some good comic writing in it, has some nice little comedy bits. And Phil Silver's wearing glasses 600 years before they invented glasses is kind of fun. If you want this one, it's already $20 discounted on the imprint website, so you can still get it. I'm not sure it's got as large an audience as some of the other things that were coming up, including a bunch of films by Walter Hill. But this one for me works and I recommend it to people who enjoy this kind of adventure film and want to get something that's a bit special. Now, I can't see region... Let me see if there's any region coding on these. Don't see any notification about region coding, which probably leads me to think that there is no region coding on these. 
And I'm sure that people like Heath over at Serial at Midnight will know because he has multi-zone players and when Imprint puts out something, he always checks them on his non-multi-zone player. I'm crazily happy with this one. And I think you should have it in your collection. Even if you're not collecting all the Imprint movies, and there's some, some people who are collecting them all, I'm cherry-picking the stuff I like, even with review copies like this. I'm trying not to get them all, but I'm trying to find the ones that I can be a bit passionate about. And this one is definitely one of those. So that's it for this time around. The day before this one comes out, I'm doing a live stream where I'm talking about all the horror movies I love and reviewing a few other bits and pieces. Let me know what you think of these ones and whether you're going to get them. They're not the cheapest thing in the world, but they are premium editions and you pay a premium for premium editions. And there are a lot of extras on there. Imprint and their parent company, Viavision, are doing a fantastic job with these sets. So like, subscribe, leave a comment. Also, you can support the channel by donating at patreon.com slash paleocinema. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Watch some good movies. Watch some bad movies. Watch some movies where people swing scimitars at each other. And I'll catch you next time.